Alright, so in today's video we're talking about the YZX Studio ZY 12 PDN. This is a PD power delivery trigger. Um, so it's made by YZX Studio and um, I think it's insanely overpowered. Uh, this microcontroller is basically, from what I gather, controlling a power delivery chip. I'll see if I can zoom in and I'll let you guys see a part number on this. Should be good enough. Right, so I'm pretty sure that's the setup they're going, they're going for. And uh, this does have a button. I did have one and uh, now I got one by mistake actually. And I think I will integrate it into my uh, XT60 interconnect network. That's a topic for another video, but um, it's pretty useful. You can actually set it up in multiple ways, but the user interface, again, YZX Studio really loves doing these one button interfaces. Uh, their power monitors usually have just one button. Somehow the power bank has two. I don't know how they how they manage to squeeze 100% more uh, buttons on that. But anyway, I'm not sure if this is a clone or not. But the user interface is 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 pretty pretty lackluster, so to say. So it's not intuitive, and it does have literal objective emissions. And uh, so what I did is I cooked up a Right, this is a good excuse to cook up a finite state machine diagram. As you're always cool, let's see if I can uh, reduce the glare. And uh, let's quickly zoom into this a tiny bit and I'll uh, try to have this on the right side. Uh, so right off the bat, you don't want to start, right, power delivery. Just a quick intro to power delivery. Power delivery runs over the uh, channel configuration lines of the Type-C connector. And these are not present on any Type-A to Type-C wire. So you definitely need a Type-C to Type-C connect uh, wire to use power delivery. It's just how it is. So if you do actually use one of these, as I did like a year ago when I first got one of these, uh, you'll just have it blink so it does actually detect there not being anyone on the channel select uh, wire. And it just blinks, right? and you can't do much with it and it will not uh, trigger quick charge which is unfortunate I mean you could technically do it but it uh, doesn't so you will need to use a type C to type C cable and right that means plugging it into a type C adapter in this case I'm using this Bezeus one uh, these are usually very good housings and very shit quality inside but uh, so far so good did actually have a previous 65 watt one die on me, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so right after power up, what will happen is this thing will ask if, uh, will check if the button is pressed. If not, it'll just go into the last power state. Let's quickly go over those. So red is 5, yellow is 9, green is 12. I am colorblind, but I think it's this way. I'm not fully colorblind. Turquoise, 15, blue, 20. There's a pink color. Maybe there's a power delivery voltage that this charger doesn't support, like 17.5 or or 10 or some shit like that. Although, I, given that it's after 20, I don't know what exactly it's doing. I could perhaps scope the CC line and see what happens. But pretty full at the moment. And I'm doing this instead of actual work. So, yeah. And then in the last mode... Um, the white color mode, it actually cycles through, right? So it's good if you want to check if um, the voltage is supported by a particular power supply or power bank or power adapter or whatever. And um, so there's a few things that I've omitted from this because this is done on paper and it's already pretty cluttered. Um, right, you basically, you basically click through these, right? select a color, select a voltage, then long press, and then you'll have to reset the thing and it'll go to the last power mode. However, as I've written here in a very small font, 
Uh, only mode, and this is what I'm saying that the UX is a bit uh, fucked up. Only mode zero and mode six allow you to actually change the voltages. These other ones are actually fixed, right? So if you boot into one of these modes, it'll actually stay here and ignore the button. Just in case, right, you don't know why it's, it's locked up on you. So anyway, let's uh, actually bring in a power monitor so we see more of what's happening. I think these are only sold in female, so anyway. As you can see, right, even though I'm plugged in, the power monitor is dead because it only has power, the wire is only powered on the auxiliary uh, power lines, right? There's this five volt line that's always live, but the main power is dead unless you ask for voltage. This is how type C works. So this will ask for five volts if I uh, remember correctly. No, it's actually in the nine volt mode, right? So this is the last mode I've set it to and it ignores the button as I've previously mentioned. So let's unplug it, hold down the power button, right? So you have to hold it down for more than two seconds and it goes into this uh, cycle blink. Let's see. Right, so it goes into the cycle blink and uh, stays at five actually, right? So um, this should be go to five volt mode. Anyway, let's actually do change that. I think we could just say output 5 volts, right? So in case you have something connected to it, it will power it, but it will in no way burn it. Probably not a good idea to connect a regular type A female connector to this because it's dangerous. Output 5 volts and except new mode, right? And it will go to the color of the last mode. In this case, it's yellow. Press the yellow mode. And so we can now click through these. Right now we have, uh, what do we have, green. This actually does show way better on camera than in real life. So green is 12 volts, right? And we still have five here. So you need to keep track of this in your mind. Again, perhaps it would have been nice to actually have it output, although yeah, that might be dangerous, probably not. Anyway, it's probably recommended you get one of these monitors though, when you play around with this, otherwise it might get quite complicated. Uh, so it goes green, turquoise, blue, pink, white, and then red again. All right, so let's just, for example, put it into turquoise, and you long press, right, and then it goes goes dark, still outputs 5 volts, right? And it freezes, it doesn't do anything now, it's stuck, you have to reset it. So we basically unplug it and now it will boot into the last power mode, it's technically to saved power mode. I'm not gonna correct this as well, although the temptation is there and it is burning a hole inside of me. So anyway, and we have 15. And again, 15, you can swap the modes. And uh, let's demo one last thing, right? So let's boot it into five. So I think this is how I got it. So red is the first mode, logically. Reboot. We're in five, and now from five, you can actually click through these, right? You would basically, these would go to these but you'd actually have to mirror these because these actually don't output, right? Blue 20 volts, if you get to it from the setup mode, doesn't actually output 20 volts, it still outputs five. It's just symbolizing this and then once you get to it from boot, does it actually enable the, the output, so to say. Anyway, so this actually would be a good, um, good mode if you just want to use this with different voltages each time and you do not want it to uh, to boot into a too high a voltage, right? So it always starts at five, right? So it's pretty good that way. And what you can also do is uh, put it into this test mode. So I'll show you guys this and that will be it. So let's again cycle through these. Which one is it? I think it's this one. And let's plug it back in. Surprisingly, the iPhone focuses best on 4K 60. It is amazing. But it does burn up so much that you can only film for like 15 minutes. 
And so yeah, this basically just cycles through and you can stop it, I think. Right, you can go manual and then it does stop cycling. So it is very usable, right, with the slight emissions that you can't escape these modes. It's, it's decent and I really would have enjoyed like two goddamn buttons. How hard would it have been? But uh, alas, uh, we don't have them. So anyway, that's been the YZX Studio ZY12 PDN. These are pretty nice. Uh, in case you want fixed voltage ones, I do recommend red and you don't want to pay, right? You, you, you're sure you're going to put this into a product. I mean a product, a DIY project. Um, you can get versions that are pre-programmed. I will bring some on screen. And uh, those are two, like there are two variants of those. And they do have some jumper wires. They do have two positions for jumper wires. But uh, you still have to get the correct version, right? So there's a 15 and 20 volt version. And there's a 9 and 12 volt version, I think. Right, this, this shit keeps changing. However, one thing to note is those, right, these ones on screen, uh, will actually settle for the most they can get, right? So if you get a 12 volt one and your power bank only can go up to nine, it will ask for nine, right? Or if your power bank can somehow only supply 12 and you're asking 20, it will go up to the highest possible uh, voltage. All right, so I think that just about covers everything. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And yeah, have a good one.